In a mere matter of seconds, Dolly 3 managed to go and create what looked like a beautiful first draft at a user interface. I mean, the text was a little bit wonky, but aside from that, what I was looking at, if I did not know it was generated by an AI, would be that of a beautiful user interface that's a high fidelity, by the way, a high fidelity mockup that I could genuinely see myself as a software engineer going and building. So I've gone ahead and loaded up ChatGPT on my iPad here, and we're gonna be loading it up with some simple prompts. Let's take a look at how ChatGPT and feeding that information into Dolly 3, because keep in mind, the information that I'm feeding into ChatGPT does not get directly fed into Dolly. So for example, if I said I wanted a, a picture of a broccoli flying in a spaceship, and it's, uh, there's lightning all around, uh, ChatGPT wouldn't actually feed that information directly into Dolly 3. ChatGPT would take that, make a super descriptive drawing of what it thinks I want to have created, and then feeds that into Dolly 3. And in less than 30 seconds, this is what we got. A picture of somebody holding an iPhone with a user interface for a dog walking application. Now, Dolly 3 can't do text perfectly, that's the one thing it has a bit of a fault in, but you can see that we've got our dog walking header, we've got you know available dog walkers, that's, that's pretty much what it's trying to say there. We got a picture of a nice cute dog at the top, we've got a, a paw print. In the top right corner you can see you know some buttons, in the top left corner you can see another button. You can totally see how as a software engineer, somebody who primarily focuses on the coding aspect of it, I could easily take this user interface that's been designed by Dolly 3, copy it, paste it into Figma, and then just make some little tracings around where I want the buttons to be and where specific images are, things of that nature, until I've got a solid wireframe. And then I can just simply go and figure out what exactly I want each of these buttons to do. I mean, based on this one alone, you could build an entire SaaS up around it. I mean, think about those applications like Rover or one of those ones where they're people are watching your dogs for you, uh, you could easily have this as a page within the application. You can see start walk, end walk, you can see how long they've been being walked for. Imagine you're a busy working professional with a dog at home, you know, no kids, and you need somebody to go walk your dog for you. Within your application, you can see live where the person is walking your dog. Think about it like Uber Eats or one of those delivery apps where you can see in real time where the driver is. You get the same thing for the dog walker here. And the user interface has been completely designed for you. All you have to do is go and code it. Or if you don't actually have any of the coding skills, you can go and design a brief idea for what your user interface could look like with this, um, touch it up a little bit, maybe fix the text up, pass it off to, to a developer and uh, you're off to go. And the cool thing is, this doesn't stop at one iteration. I mean, I really like the second version. I mean, it looks really good, but the stars being blue, I mean, I know what they were going for with the branding there, but I'm somebody, I have to see the stars as yellow. It's just the thing that connects in my brain. So if I write a prompt here and say the stars in the second one should be yellow, and I, and I send that one off, and uh, ChatGPT is gonna take that, and it's gonna interpret it, and it's gonna create the prompts, feed them into Dolly 3, and uh, there we go, we're off to the races. And in about 30 seconds, let's take a look at what we got. 12 seconds later. And look at that, ChatGPT feeding that prompt all the way back into Dolly 3 has now completely generated a version with yellow stars, look at that. Same buttons, you know, same kind of look, same kind of design, but the stars are now yellow. Fantastic. Okay, great. So we've got our dog walking application, some user interface that's designed that way. Let's let's mix it up. Let's do something like uh, a, a fitness application, a, a workout scheduler, uh, something of that nature. Let's say, um, okay. And also, oh, this is something I've noticed. If you do have access to Dolly 3, is make sure if you're going to be designing stuff, start a new tab when you go into something else. Because if you don't, then it will start to blur the lines a little bit. In my live stream that I did last week, I actually went through and I, I just started designing a new uh, type of application. I think they requested it was a woman's clothing store user interface and I actually ended up getting some dog pictures in there um, which the chat found pretty funny. Uh, so we're just gonna start a new chat just to make sure that we uh, actually actually go and make things uh, different and they're not gonna be subtly sneaking in some dogs in there. Okay, and I can see where it's going with this. This is clearly modeled after some sort of heart rate monitor. You can see at the top what looks like to be a typical heart rate monitor with the, the 22 in the heart and obviously that's supposed to say home. And you can see what appears to be, oh, they've, they've combined in some, some laps and things like that, along with some other icons in the second one here. But not exactly what I want. There's a few too many buttons here. There's uh, not enough images. So I'm just gonna pop out here and I'm gonna say, I want to have more images and less buttons. Now you'll notice that for this one, because I didn't ask Dolly to specifically go and change something that it previously did, I just said that I wanted to redesign it with more images and less buttons, it's still gonna create two images for me. Whereas in the last time where I asked for a specific alteration on one, it only did that one image for me. So we can see here, oh wow, look at this. 
We've got uh, a more improved version on a smartphone with high resolution images of workouts and an illustrated interface on a tablet showcasing various fitness activities. Because at first glance, it kind of has that retro, almost Incredibles look to it with the, the red and the black kind of contrasting with the white backgrounds, almost kind of like Apple in the iPod you know, era when they do those commercials with the silhouettes and the white background. That sort of thing is the vibe you're kind of going for here. And at first glance, I would have no idea that this is AI generated. This simply looks like something that I would see on a typical fitness app. And it's been designed in seconds. I didn't even have to think about the whole process. But now I want to give it a challenge. I want to actually push its limits, see how much it's actually capable of. I'm going to ask Dolly3 to design 10 different pages, 10 different screens for a typical app. And let's see how it handles making it consistent the whole way through in you know, theme, design, just how the user interface looks in general, and see if it actually can generate 10 images. Let's do the fitness workouts and the list of trainers. It looks gorgeous. The actual user interface looks pretty. And you can see how at a glance, I would be able to look at this and easily recreate any of the things that it designs. I can look at this page and just go, oh, that's a flex box here. That's a flex column here. That's a, you know, all those things that I typically see as a software engineer designed right there for me. And that's what makes this so scary for user interface designers. I don't need to look at something actually designed by a human because I can just look at this and kind of work off of it enough to build it to be exactly the way that this looks. But I like to keep this moving along. So let's do another two pages. Let's say where the fitness trainers are located in relation to you and uh, let's say a profile page. What exactly are your fitness goals? And it just keeps getting better. This is what our profile page looks like, which I could totally see being a tablet view of a profile page for a fitness application. And bringing it over to the locations page, even more impressive. Look at that. We've got the location pins with the, you know, the little pins above them. You can see a list of fitness trainers and it looks like they've got some more info about the fitness trainers there and some buttons at the bottom. Again, all in tablet view because ChatGPT feeding these prompts back into Dolly 3 keeps saying this is a application in tablet view. So there we go. But this wouldn't be complete if we didn't bring it up to desktop. We know that on mobile user interfaces, this could easily be replaced and done by this. I mean, I was able to go and design a dog walking app and then make adjustments to it while it kept the same general user interface design. And now we can prove that on tablet view, it can do it just as well. And going and actually designing pages systematically actually, uh, step by step, and you can make adjustments to it the whole way along. So now let's bring it up to the desktop view for the final challenge. And for the final challenge, we're going to be giving Dolly3 the next trillion dollar SaaS company. Truly, this idea is going to be the breakout AI tech startup for setting the course of what the next 50 years of tech entrepreneurship is going to look like. And that is, where is the best place to bury your money in the ground in the next recession? Now, obviously, this is not something that any rational or sane user interface designer would do unless they were being paid to do it or doing it for a portfolio or just even doing it as a joke. But the prompt that I've actually come up with is I want you to design the user interface for a website where you're going to be finding the best place to bury your money in the ground. But now it's time to answer the big question. And that question is, would I be able to take the result that Dolly3 gives me on the first attempt and go and build an actual homepage on desktop for this fictitious application about finding the best place to bury your money in the ground without any extra prompts to Dolly 3. This is the big challenge. Would I be able to take it and completely cut out the user interface, user experience designer as the middleman? That's what we're here to find out. And that's the question we're about to answer right now. I'm a man of my word. And this is the result we got. Look at that gorgeous artwork of a, of a shovel on a pile of what appears to be dirt, gravel, glorious sunset in the background, and uh, finding places to bury money. And then two buttons, and you've got the different locations at the bottom. I think, does that say find location? Yeah, find location, it's got some stars, find tips, got some dollar signs in there testimonials, whatever. But at the, and then we got a we got a bar at the top menu bar and a couple couple small bars at the top there. And then we got a logo in the corner. I could take this design and go and build it. I could see it. I could visualize it. I know where the divs are, the flex boxes. Uh, I could build the navigation out of it. I could all these things that I could simply take from this and go and build. And that is exactly why user interface designers are going to be replaced by Dolly 3 and tools like Dolly 3 in the next coming years. And that, my friends, is something to worry about. Oh, and just as an afterthought, for those of you who are wondering what the uh, second image looked like from that prompt, like I said,
crazy.